All right. Your second one. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Glad to see you all here. So we're here to talk about some low back pain and some sciatica. <laughs> so a little bit about myself. Now, I'm going to tell you I'm very structured in what I want to talk about, but I usually don't follow this stuff very closely. Um, I, do, I do some lectures. I do some teaching that lasts three days at a time, so I, I have the ability to talk and talk and talk, so they'll keep me on track and hopefully we won't be here for eight hours. No, I'll, I'll try to keep it really short, but hopefully get, get some good information. <laughs> um, a little bit about myself, I graduated from PT school back in 94, so I've been at this a little while. Um, uh, af after I graduated, I uh, thought I was very smart and knew a lot of stuff. I started. Uh, getting some more education, learning some new things, and started working with my patients, doing different stuff. Um, and at that point, honestly, uh, I felt like I had about a 25% fixed people, 50%. That was okay, but things were maybe just needed more work. And then 25% just nothing really changed. And so uh, I grew really frustrated with that. So. Obviously, I've, I've been, it was a long time ago, uh, and I'm born and bred Texas, God bless Texas. However, Texas and the U.S. in general were, were really slow in, in giving uh, U.S. <coughs> Texas-based physical therapists the skills or the ability to do different things that we needed to. So uh, things like um, manipulation, things like what the acupuncturists do, dry needling. Uh, we couldn't do any of those things. So really what we did, we did exercise. Now exercise is great. Uh, we need to exercise, we need to move, we need to do all those things. But we were limited as a profession in what we could do to help um, treat people. And so with, with that in mind, I went back and I got my doctorate degree. Uh, I would love to say that getting that was the key to me becoming good at what I do. Um, I, I'm proud of getting that degree, but I'll be honest, that really didn't get me anywhere. Uh, it's a piece of paper up on a wall. I'm very proud of it, but that's not what helped in here. So what it did do was open up my mind to being a little bit more aggressive, being a little bit more hands-on in everything that I did. Uh, so in, in PT school, I'm gonna go back a little bit, uh, I was um, fortunate to be in a, in a new emerging program. I didn't love it. Uh, that was very, very hands-on and based on what we're gonna call a a European model, a physiotherapy model, which is, um, again, even at that time, we really couldn't do all of it here because, again, we're a little bit behind on the times uh, because of the FDA and other things here. Uh, but I got a lot of exposure there. So fast forward to getting past my doctorate degree, um, that opened up the ability for me to look at more aggressive things. Fortunately, about that time, we also had some things change at the state level and in the U.S. So. Uh, we could then get a lot more aggressive with how we, we treat different problems. So I went on and trained with a lot of uh, really prestigious nationally, internationally known uh, clinicians and researchers in, in, in physiotherapy or physical therapy and, and learned a lot from those guys both on, on manual skills, the hands-on stuff. But I went further and got a lot of additional training, a lot of certification in dry needling. Now before you get all freaky about dry needling, it, uh, we do get concerned about it because nobody likes needles, except it can be quite effective. Sideline to that. Um, got a lot of good training, got a lot of good certification through that, and then I realized, well, they did a really good job, but they didn't go far enough. They didn't put it all together. They taught us how to, how to treat this muscle, but they didn't tell us how to treat this part of the body. They taught us how to needle this muscle, but they didn't tell us how to treat the whole thing. So over the past six, seven years, I've gone, ahead, gone through and I've developed a, a different protocol for the entire treatment of, of regional. Um, I was fortunate to get it uh, trademarked through the uh, U.S. Patent Office. Um, and so we've been applying it here. We've been seeing fantastic results from that. Uh, but it's not a substitute for the other hands-on treatment and it's not a substitute for movement. Ultimately, this is about getting them back to function and to move and do what we want it to. So that's a little bit about me. 
So over the past 30 days, by show of hands, I'm going to include mine because I have two. Who's had any back pain over the past 30 days? And, and that would be everyone. So um, let's talk about, um, and I'm going to try to go really closely according to your, your yellow sheet. Uh, a lot of this, I just want to go through and answer a lot of these questions. So one thing I want to look at is, is define low back pain and sciatica. And I'm not an artist, so you have to bear with me here. So I'm going to come in. And so so when we talk about low back pain, predominantly, so here we are at the pelvis, the belt line right here. Low <coughs> back pain traditionally, we're, we're going to lump into a category of, of problems right here. If you come out to the side a little bit, uh, but by and large, it's just that center, just, just right there, that business. When we talk about sciatica, more often we're talking about pinpointing off to the side. That's going to be a little bit of this business right here. Um, an important part out of, the, out of the vertebra come all of the nerves that create the sciatic nerve. Well, they come down and run down the leg do that on both sides. At about the knee, they split. One of the nerves continues on, the main side, it continues on down to the heel. And then the other branch comes around to the side of the foot and, and, and hits uh, the skin on the top of the foot. So on, on number one, A, the side nerve is the longest and largest. B, your body has obviously two sciatic nerves, uh, one on the left and on the right. And so when we talk about sciatica, we, we partly are talking about this pain on the side, but but I like, so, so I'm going to back up again. Sciatica, I'm going to call it, it's, it's kind of a garbage can term. A lot of stuff gets categorized as sciatica. And what I talk about sciatica may be a lot different than what another colleague somewhere else calls sciatica. Um, so it can be very specifically this pain we get right there at that SI joint, which we'll come back to, we'll talk about. Or it can also refer to this radiating pain down the leg. So to, today we're going to talk about it more about this pain right here. Then we'll just talk about pain that radiates and where it radiates down. So, um, so on that on C, the sciatic nerve travels from the back. It goes down the back of the leg and into the foot. And then lastly, uh, sciatic, sciatica sufferers may experience pain, numbness, or tingling in the leg. And it's all caused by a problem in the back. And I'll throw another one on there on D that's not on the, on, the, on the sheet, but sometimes it can cause heaviness as well. So if I can, while y'all are finishing there, I'd also like to introduce my staff. And they, they've kind of run off and they, they, they hid. I, I forced them to come tonight because I, I threatened that they were going to have to do the talking. Uh, they, they didn't believe it, but... Maybe I'll get them to do that next time. So my practice manager, who is also my wife, you probably met her up in the front. Ashton is right there. Next to her, well, actually way in the back, she's diligently working, is Kat. Kat is a, our, our, our newest physical therapist. Uh, she's been with us, well, she's kind of been with us for about a year, actually. But she's doing a great job back there. You can keep on knocking it out. Um, <coughs> Next to Ashton is a receptionist, a lot of titles, Angela. Uh, she handles all of the problems that none of us really want to handle up there. Next to her, Brandon. Who else is over there? There's Casey, <laughs> then Alex, and Lindsay. So, and and they, they all do a great job helping me out and, and doing some great things. So, y'all don't have to speak. I don't think so, not yet. <laughs> 
Oh, come on, let them speak. <laughs> I mean, they, they can if they want to. They, they can be kind of, they can be talk shy in this situation, but you get them out here working and they just won't shut up. They just keep on yapping. But it, it's, it's good yap. So, uh, if we can, what I want to do, and everybody's got to do this, you might have to find a little room. What I want to do is go through a little bit of some movement. I want to see what's causing people what. So everybody, let's go ahead and stand up for me. When we do this, I don't want you to force through any significant pain. If it's tight, if it's painful, that's a good place to stop. We're not trying to force anything. Here. So the very first thing, and I would stand on the table, but I'm too tall, is want to reach down towards the toes. As you're doing that, I want to find out, does that hurt? Is that painful as you come down? Or is it more painful coming up? And we'll come back and talk about that. Okay. The second one, we're going to put the hands right in the small of the back. Now, I know this crowd, because y'all all, all not like me. This is the worst one. And that's that one right there. Lean them back. And I hear a lot of groaning with that one. So nobody likes that one. Okay. So the next one, just leaning off to the right side. I see some eyes crunching. Okay. Then off the other side. Okay. So who, who, who felt what and when? Bending, bending down to touch the toes. Who was the problem there? Down, don't Tell me. I have MS, so everything's a problem. But <laughs> <laughs> this is my problem. Right there. And I'm on pills for this. Okay. But more on there on your right side then. Yeah, it goes down here. Okay. Um, anybody else more of a problem bending down? Okay. Who all bigger problem going back? Yep. Okay. What about to the side? Anybody with a real problem off to the side? Okay. All right. Do you mind? Everybody can have a seat. Coming up. Coming back up. All right. So if we can, I'd like to do just a little bit of a, a demonstration. I know you're dealing with some MS and some other issues. Do you mind if I utilize you? Oh, that's fine. Might make me move a little better. <laughs> I have, well, I had a shot in my knee that they said it's bursitis here. Okay. But, and they said it came from my back. Okay. So let's, I'm going to do that again. So if you will, I'm going to look at what's going on there. So you do pretty well coming down there. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Then coming back up, you got to give her a little help. Yeah, my legs are. Okay. And then if you will show me going back, not terrible actually. That's, no. that's pretty good. Yeah. What about off to the side? Not bad there. No. And then over to that side. Yeah. A little bit over there. Okay. So what 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 are you on? If you don't mind my asking. What is it? It's a DIC. I think it's more for inflammation than anything. Okay. And a, a back pain doctor manager brother okay. gave them to me. Okay. So if you will, and I'm going to step behind. I promise I won't let you fall. Well, yeah, because I'll lose my balance probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and let's try the other side. Okay. Oh, hang on a minute. i got to concentrate. <laughs> it's my balance. Just don't let me go that way and I can hold it up. So which one gave you more problems? This one. Lifting that one up or lifting the left one? Which one caused you more? We get past this one. Okay. So got some business right there. So right side, I would like to. If you don't mind, I'm going to set you right there. And actually what we'll do, I'm going to lay you down first. Push 
around a little bit. Maybe 10 or 10 seconds. Okay. With this left leg, can you lift it? There. Very good. Okay, drop that down. Do that four more times. Not too bad. What about this one? Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do? I just have real bad sore muscles. And and, and you are complicated. Yes, I with with MS. However, I've got an idea that you may give a little bit of something. If you don't mind, I'm going to have you roll over to the side toward me. Okay, I'm going to move your legs forward a little bit. I promise I'm not going to crack or pop or anything like that. Right, so I'm going to take, I'm going to put my hands on you. I'm going to move you around a little bit. I went to rehab in Rio Dosa. So you're, you're, you're complicated because you've got more than one thing. I'm hoping to find one perfect little thing. <laughs> and fix it, but I, I, I picked a top I one. I can't sleep on this side hardly at all. It gets to throbbing and hurts so bad I can't stand it. Now, last night I throbbed back here yeah. trying to sleep. You're, you're gonna, and she's going to be, we're going to find that in, in a perfect world we have one problem, but in reality there's always, almost always more than one thing going on. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So here, I want you to lift up. I want you to hold right there. And don't we push down here. I'm going to go again. And then one last time. Right there. And then let that down. All right. Now, I'm going to reach behind you. I'm going to hold right there. And what I want you to do is push that shoulder, just kind of like you're trying to roll forward in my hand right here. Let's go and roll forward. So <laughs> All right, let's, if we can't, let's roll you back onto your back. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring these legs, these knees up, just to right there, same thing here. Now, I'm going to try to push your knees apart. I want you to just clench and keep them together. I'm kind of strong. You're making my elbow pop. <laughs> What I want you to do, I want to get back on the floor. I want to go through that standing and leaning inside the side again. This is normal. Usually it does? Yeah, it does. Is it gone or is it still? It's going away. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. So, when, when we did this before, what caused you more issue back there? Was it bending forward? Yes. Oh, you mean, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it wasn't really bad. Okay. Well, let's, let's try it again, let's see. Okay. Okay, coming back. Okay, going back. That's easy. 
and lean to the left. And then what about to the right? That's much better. Good. Yes. Much better. Very good. <laughs> All right. Give her a big hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And so there's a lot more that's involved with 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 dealing with the back uh, sciatica, and hers was a, was a very specific situation. Except she's got a lot of other things going on. Now again, that's kind of the thing is there's it's rare that it's just one particular thing going on. When we're let's say up to 35, yes, there can be single <coughs> issues, and we'll talk about that. Well, but, I didn't tell you that I've also had three steroid shots in my back, and that didn't work. And two weeks later, they singed the nerves. And that worked after like four or five weeks. I was going to say that worked for a while, but it didn't last. So the, the, the bigger question is, and again, we'll get to this, <coughs> were, were you doing anything about it afterward? Not really. No. But it was so painful, I couldn't stand out of bed. My back hurt. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. So a, a, lot of, a lot of what we're, we're going to talk about is, what, what can be done to bring that, that intense, that stabbing pain down? Uh, uh, obviously, there's medications, there's injections, there's drugs, there's, there's surgery. There's a number of things that can be done, but are there alternatives to that? And, and the easy answer is, for most people, yes, there, there are other choices. I'm try, trying to stick to the script. I've talked about myself a little bit. Uh, so let, let, let's come back. To here, so the, the question is, um, for us, the question is, is your pain reproducible? So we, we, we know that a lot of times uh, there are things that, that cause us to have some pain. It can be bending down. Uh, for some people, it, it can be sitting. For some people, it's walking. Oh, just, just, what, what causes, what activity causes you pain? Trying to relax. <laughs> standing. Standing. Standing is a big one. Trying to sleep. Standing. Sleep. Trying to relax. Any particular, like sitting? Mm hmm Okay. Oh. Oh, you got sitting. Um, for some people, it's, it's doing dishes, doing laundry. Vacuuming, anything that brings us out here. Vacuuming is usually a big one. Um, so full disclosure, um, not only am I the president of the club, I'm also a member. So I deal with, with a lot of back issues myself. Um, if we, and we'll, we'll get to this. If we were to take a look at, at my imaging of my back, um, my L5 sits on my S1. Disc is gone. Um, However, I, I, I've learned to manage my symptoms, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. I've done it a number of different ways over the years, but I haven't had an acute flare-up or problem probably in over a year and a half. And that flare-up probably just lasted a day. So what, what my goal is for me is to, number one, not, not have to miss work. I mean, that, that's kind of important. And not, not to let my pain interfere with anything that I'm doing. That, that's what I need to look at. Um, anything else for, with anybody? Anything? Any other activity? Um, yes, ma'am. Walking upstairs. Yoga. Yoga. You know, yoga is supposed to be relaxing. Well, it is to a point. Yoga. I, I also apologize. I can't write either. So if you can't read, that's because I can't write. Either. Going upstairs. And for a lot of people, it's going downstairs. Um, sleeping, that, that can be a tough one because it, it's hard to find the right position to get in that you can stay in that's not going to be a problem for the back. So obviously a lot of issues there. The nice thing is, is in, in the concept of being re reproducible, does anybody have a constant pain that never goes away? Okay. The, those are the ones that we, we have to take a really close look at because there could be something underlying that really needs some, some closer look. Now, we, there are also cases where there's more than one thing going on 
And so it could be one thing's causing the pain, you shift, something else is causing the pain, but there's also some red flags underneath that, that we have to look at to make sure that those aren't critical things that are happening. But in the case where we know that if we bend, it makes it worse, or if we sit, it makes it worse, but if we reduce those things, then, then we can change what's happening. If we can reproduce it or if we can change it, the nice thing is then usually we can reduce it. And that's what we're looking for, to reduce that pain and see if we can continue with our activities without it being a big issue. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, when I said I had constant pain, I wanted to clarify that. Um, I think the constant pain, I, I wear braces, and I'm about to go have a reconstructive foot surgery okay. November the 4th. But what I've noticed over time, the braces are doing less and less good. I've also noticed that my calf muscles, I used to be incredibly strong in my legs, and I've noticed I've lost almost all the muscle away. in my calf. Okay. Okay. And um, the other thing is, for example, I was painting the other day, rolling. You got to put some pressure when you roll. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what what happened was that over a short period of time, my feet were hurting a little bit because I was pushing up and putting pressure on my feet. Mm -hmm. But then over a short period of time, my back started hurting up through through here. Right. And, it's, and it still hurts a little because I overdid a muscle right there. Sure. I know what it was. But that got me started thinking about when my foot first started hurting, it was just my foot. Then it was up my leg left to my knee. And then it got to where if I stayed on them too long, it hurt all the way up to my back end and all the way up. So let me ask you, the, the, the brace, is that is that uh, from an orthopedic injury? Is that diabetes? Is that... Well, it's, I was born. It's a it's a deformity, but what happened was over the years, many years, of twisting my ankle and you know just because I wasn't walking right and just little minor injuries, never anything bad enough to have to go get a brace or sure. anything like that, but just enough that I could feel it and I know I would uh, limp on it for a few days and then it get better. Mm -hmm. That happened dozens of times over 40 years. And he's been wearing years. them two years. So. The, the point that I was trying to bring up, though, about it to kind of tie into this is that it may be that some of the back pain doesn't start in the back. It starts somewhere else because, like, I was favoring my right leg because my left foot hurt so badly, and now my right foot starting to hurt. And up my so and in your case, it started at birth because you were dealing with a problem. In, in, in the, so, so this is a machine. God yeah. created a, a perfect machine. And then once we hit day one, things start to, to wear. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, in anything that we do that changes how this machine works, whether it's tightness in our hamstrings, whether it's uh, somebody that's prone to, to roll the ankle a lot, we're going to change a little bit about how we walk. And that goes up the chain, or, or it can. Uh, it can go up the chain. We can see it in the side of the leg. We can see it here. And what starts is a problem here ends up in the low back, and, and if it's not addressed early enough, then the back is the issue and can send the problem down to the ankle. And so um, and you, you almost have to deal with both of them. Because you can you can deal with the back and get that in good shape, but if that's still a problem, then you're going to have that same problem coming back up. Well, so I heard you talking about treating, trying to treat symptoms and avoid surgeries. I have to have this surgery on this foot. Right. But they're wanting me to have a knee replacement on my right knee after that, after this skills. They're going to be almost a year apart. But I'm thinking this started getting, this knee's not all that bad. This one got a lot worse very quickly, probably because I was favoring this so much and I'm too heavy. And so. My, myself, I take care of the first problem first and, yeah. and then find out if, if the body can, can acclimate and get back to a normal level of function. We can live with some level of degeneration. Um, we, 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 we can even have some knees that are bone on bone for a while. As long as they continue to function. Uh, a good doctor friend of mine once told me we don't we don't treat the picture. So we go to get our MRI, we get our x-rays, our CTs that shows all this stuff in there. Well we don't treat the picture. If we did, 
we would all be under the knife all the time. We, we treat the symptoms of what are going on. So again, my, my, what I would do on mine, get, get that ankle where it needs to be, and then see, okay, how, how does the back respond, and can I get back to normal? Because maybe the right knee is a problem because you are giving off of it. Then that's... It's not 100% bone on bone, but a part of it, about half of it is. And I was just curious as if good exercise, obviously lose weight, maybe diet and some, some kind of uh, supplements, would it ever, is there ever a deal where it would regrow any of the it, cartilage it's, or anything? It's not, so, and again, I'm going to disagree with a couple of my doctor friends here. Yeah. I don't feel like we can regrow cartilage, not yet. There is stem cell out there, and there are there is some hope for that. I don't think we know quite yet how 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 beneficial that's going to be. I will say that it has a better benefit if it's not completely bone on bone. So if there's some, there's definitely some chance to improve. And, and I would definitely go through the non-surgical options all the way I could until I just absolutely had to. The big question is quality of life. When do you lose that quality of life factor? And again, getting this taken care of may change the rest of the system so that yeah. that may straighten itself out. A perfect 18 year old knee? Absolutely not. But will it get back to functioning normally? That's the question. Yeah, so well, good you question. Sit in an afternoon and eat and walk in and stuff, not being constant pain. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, so getting back to uh, number three on the worksheet uh, if your pain, numbness, or tingling is reproducible, then it's reducible. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about the past 30 days having pain, uh, the different types of things there. So let's talk a little bit about the cause of a problem. And it doesn't really matter what the problem is. There are three things that we can do related to a problem. And I'm not trying to get philosophical here, but so in preparation for this this little workshop. Earlier in the spring we had a lot of rain in our, our, our ceiling. Um, we will just replace that one. We had a big raindrop. The, the, the tiles were, were nasty, horrible. The rain was coming through. Uh, and so um, we, well in all honesty, the year before it had happened too, but uh, talked to the landlord and uh, they were going to get around to it. They didn't get around to it. So step number one, what did we do about that problem? Well, I'm going to say, what did the landlord do about the problem? They ignored it. So, back hurts. I've got this coming down the leg. Oh, it's better the next day. Okay, I'm going to, it, it's all right. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, a lot of things in life you can get by with. You can, you can ignore low back pain for a long time. I, I, I have literally had people come in who have been dealing with, with sciatica issues, back pain, for 20, 25 years, and finally it got to the point where it was just too much, come in, and, and there's some things that we can do, and, and, and turned around and reversed 25 years worth of back pain. Uh, whereas, if they had dealt with it earlier, they could have done something about it. So ignore it. And that is number four. The number one biggest mistake that low back pain and sciatic and sufferers make is they ignore it. So again, the three things that you can do about it. Um, number two, you can alter. So we're rushing around last weekend trying to spiff the place up a little bit and saw that big thing over there and decided, well, that looks awfully ugly. We probably better do something about it. So had some tiles in the back. Go and, go and try to replace it. Well, the, the sad fact of the matter is, is I took the one down to put another one in. I found not another one, not a second. I found six other tiles up there that somebody had replaced over the years and just adding more and more and more. So somebody along the line, well, I was doing it too, had, had altered it. So didn't deal with the problem, but did go and try to do something. So in terms of, 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 of back pain and sciatica, what, what does alter it look like? Altering it is medications, injections, surgery, things of that nature. That that is that is altering. It's not it's not changing the status of what's happening back there. If there is a 
uh, a disc that's bulged, if there's a herniation, if there's a pinched nerve, it, it's not changing that, but it, it's masking the symptoms. There are cases, people with constant pain, there are uh, cases where surgery is an emergency situation that needs to happen, without a doubt. Um, but for, for the majority of us, when we're dealing with these things, most of those things are altering it, and if we don't do the rest of, of the process to, to change it physically, then we're still going to, after the medication stops, we're going to be in the same, same boat. So that is the alter part. Now, I would love to tell you that I have taken it on, on myself with my roof to handle it. Now, I'm going to say that they got up there and they did a patch job up there. So hopefully the next big rain, we won't see that tile situation again. But with, with handling a problem, and again, with the low back pain, uh, there, there are things that can be done with whether it's a, a herniated disc problem, whether it's a pinched nerve, whether it's a sciatic problem, there are things that can be done to handle that. So on C, on those three things, it's ignore it, alter it, and handle it. Well, you've all shown up here. You've obviously know that there's some issue going on, so you've taken the first step in, in handling it. All right. If, if there's questions or something, I talk a lot and I just go and I ramble. So if you need questions, answers, feel free to yell out. If you refer to the term handle it, you're referring to deal with it through a form of physical therapy. It could be. And, and I'm going to say in a lot of cases, there needs to be some sort of physical intervention up front. Because when, 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 when pain and, and inflammation is so significant, something has to happen. Now, if you use, it's gone, if, if you use the, the medication, if you use the injection, and then you, then you do the part after altering it, the, the next step to improve it, to whether it's strengthening it, whether it's working on flexibility, whether it's working on the mechanics, you still have to do that next step. Even after surgery, they can go in and say they've got a, They've got to do a, a microdiscectomy. They've got to go in and they've got to shave some of the disc off it and remove place, get some space for the nerve come out. If you've been dealing with that for a little bit and you don't then go in and strengthen everything back, you're still going to have the same issues. You're still going to have what's been causing the problem, which is more of a mechanical change. So um, one way or another, something has to happen. Again, just, just the medications, just the, the other things, won't quite get you there. There's one last step that has to be done. It doesn't have, always have to be done here, but it has to be done. We're both old enough we're on Medicare, and we have supplemental policies and stuff, so we're very fortunate. However, it's real easy to get a doctor or get Medicare or the supplement to pay for shots or a surgery or something like that, but it's like pulling teeth to get them to pay for physical therapy. I would agree. Well, it was uh, $1,900 yeah, last year, and they've raised it to $2,020. Really? That's ridiculous, because what you're telling me and what I'm hearing, and I'm taking you at your word, because when you talked about yourself in the beginning, it, it's very obvious that you have the credentials, you know what you're talking about. So they give you a shot, or they do whatever alteration, and send you home where they can send you over for one or maybe two therapy treatments and so that you would be taught this is what you do and you wouldn't have to go back to them and get a shot again so possibly or probably so there there there, there is a there is a battle and it's absolutely a battle between everybody that deals with with back problems uh, 60 percent of people that are going to the doctor are going to the doctor about their back across the board nationwide sixty wow. percent and so uh, and I'm, I'm not here to get on the bandwagon of big farm yeah but big farm is a big industry yeah and if if they can go to the doctor and and the doctor will talk to them and you know and, and we're to blame we go to the doctor we're sick we have this we we want something we we've grown up to expect I've got something I need a, a pill I need something and so partly I'm blaming us for that um, but there, there are a lot of pressures out there to give with somebody with back pain 
well, you, you, you give this medicine, you give this medicine, you give this medicine, or, or if after a time or two it doesn't work, you go to pain management. If, if the symptoms are right, you go to the spinal surgeon. And again, there are times for all of those things. Um, but my own humble opinion, if, if you haven't done the things to address it yourself first, uh, then you're missing out on something and you're not able to take care of it yourself. And, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, my, my own mother is my patient. So I've been working with her. I see her about once every six months. I mean, I see her. I see her almost every day, but I, I treat her about once every six months. So she had been through all the pain medicine. She had been through all the injections. She, she never went through the surgery, thankfully. Uh, she didn't have the symptoms that, that necessitated that. Um, pain management at one point, there was something they did that, that really helped. Um, however, it came back. And so once I started doing what I do with her, if, if she will do her homework, if she will do her exercises, her stretches, every couple of days, she would be fine. Uh, to, to, to her credit, she will admit that she forgets what they are. She gets feeling a lot better. She'll go, you know, lift cement bags and do all of this stuff around the house. Um, she fell off the roof a couple of years ago. And, and, you know, those are things that I can't control. Right. Um, but, but so much of it is yeah. a, a, about the dollar that people are fighting for. Um, it, it, it's a lot easier to go in and see back pain, here's the pills, uh, because that's what's been done forever. Um, well, they kind of, in, in the, the layman or the patient's defense, we, we grew up being taught, you go to the doctor and they make everything better. Yeah. Period. And you don't question them because they're the doctor. They know what right. they're doing. And not to knock Americans, but the Asian people grew up being taught, you exercise, you take care of your body. Right. You don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, we, we work, they we, ate a lot healthier than we did. They, they did. Like, really. So sure. the, the great state of Texas, born and bred here, um, we, we were one of the last two states in the United States to, to grant physical therapists direct access in, in, in this setting. Um, and, and we fought for it. I've been fighting for it for 25 years. This legislative session, we finally got that. Now, that there's a caveat. They gave us two weeks. So the Texas Medical Board, Texas Medical Association fought and fought and fought. And why did they fight? Because they don't want us to get in on their action. Now they say that's not it, but I promise you, that's a big part of it. Well, of course it is. Yeah, they don't want so, to know that the protein can be correct without medication. Right. Pharmaceuticals will go broke. Now, a, a, lot of, a lot of the doctors that I work with, uh, I've got great relationships with my doctors. I've got great relationships with most of my doctors. I correct that. Um, when, when I go talk to them, if they are fully centered on their patient and what needs to go on, they are, they are excited about us coming in. Um, I, I, will, I will say you, you have to be cautious. Not every physical therapist out there is, is good. Not everyone is. I hate to even say that. N not all of them have the experience or, or the, the knowledge base to do a good job at, at seeing somebody without going to see the doctor first. Some people want them to see the doctor, get all the imaging, get all the x-rays, and then be told it's this, and then come over here and do that. Um, I, don't, I don't like doing that. I prefer a patient coming, uh, doctor says, well, their back hurts. Send them over, and then we figure it out. So uh, as we move forward as a state, we're excited about that. Uh, next legislative session, we're going to push even harder, see if we can get a little bit more. So let's talk about three main causes. Of back pain. Obviously, there's a lot of causes, but three main things. The first, now you don't have to remember this, herniated nucleus pulposus. Well, what is that? We call that, in some cases, we'll call it a slip disc. But really, what it is, is a herniated disc. Or a disc bulge. Again, apologize that I can't write. The further caveat that I can't draw, <laughs> so we're going to give it a shot. So here we are. This is not a cat. So 
charades. Who can tell me what these are? Yes. Vertebra. Okay, so we've got the vertebra. In between each vertebra, we've got what? Okay. So, what what would you say is the most common place for a, for a herniated disc in the low back? Lumbar. 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 Any idea which level? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Four, five. Four and five. So L five, L four. Here we are with the disc, and what is? Okay, so for reference, this is my back and I'm standing this way. So what is this running down back here? That's the spinal cord. Bonus points, what is that area right there? It's all right. That's the frame, and that's the, that's the hole where the nerves come out to the side, that form the sciatic nerve coming down. Oh, for the sciatic so, yeah. So on a on a but boy, this is this is this is challenging here. So we have we have a vertebra comes up, comes out, comes up. So right here, and now we're looking down on my spine. So right in the middle is where the spinal cord sits. And that's where we are right here. Right. And then off to the side is where the nerves come off. To to, to create the nerves, the sciatic nerve coming down the leg. And so we have two places where we can get uh, issue here. So on a disc, and let's assume for our purposes, the, the disc sits right there. For our purposes, it does sit right there. So a disc is composed of, of two main things. Um, on the outside, there are, are concentric ring, rings of, of connective tissue, collagen. They kind of curl around each other. That's called the, the outer annulus, um, the annulus fibrosis. You don't have to know that either. On the inside, right here, is a gel substance, the nucleus pulposus. Also don't have to know that. So when we talk about a, a, a disc bulge, uh, what, what really is happening is, and especially if we look here, so as we bend forward or if we lift. What's happening is this compressive force is coming right here and it's going to move that disc. It's going to push the contents back into the spinal canal. So <coughs> you see this bulging out here and as a result we can see this now start to compress into either our central canal or at times it can bulge out to the side and give problems for the nerve out to the side. Diagnose that is an MRI? It can be. So you ask that question. That, that is the best way to diagnose it. Now, over the age of 50, how many people would you say would have herniated disc? One in 10? Oh, probably more than that. Oh, five out of 10, probably. It's actually four out of five. Wow. 80%. That's not the wow part. The wow part is those people have no pain. So 80% of us are walking around with herniated disc and we've got no pain mm. at all. I'll, when we get to number two, I'll give you another number that makes that one seem easy. So, so what does this one look like? Well, this is with a with herniated disc, well, number one, Anybody 35 or younger? Okay, one, two, okay, all of those people and some here. So, I have grandchildren at all. Right? So, this is typically people 35 years of age or younger. Around from 35 to the age of about 50, the contents of a disc starts to change. It goes from being a very, so I like to think of this as a jelly donut um, when we're younger. It's got a lot of moisture, a lot of movement, a lot of things can happen. We get past that up until and I'm, I'm over that 50 pop spot, it, it more starts to turn into a hockey puck. So it's not quite as responsive and it's a lot less dynamic. So it tends to happen to people less than 30, 35 or less. Here we see 
increase pain with bending and lifting. So with these folks, they get decreased pain when they stand tall. And the reason for that, as, as they bend and, and, and lift, again, we're getting all of this pushing back into this spinal canal, and they get more, more problematic in that position. So that's why you're told to keep your back straight and lift with your legs. Man, if we would do that when we were young, we'd be in good shape. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt, because as we're there, we're, we're cranking on this, and, and on, that's how I hurt my back, uh, doing stupid stuff as a little teenager. But if we would protect that, then that, that spinal cord, the spinal cord, the, the spine is able to, to compress that load as opposed to it just coming to L4, L5. Makes perfect sense. So there are there are different types of, of herniations. There is there's a there's a bulge. Most of us have a bulge of some sort somewhere. Uh, there, there's a herniation, which in the herniation, we actually are now starting to see some breaking down of this outer layer of of the disc. Past that, there is a a rupture, in which case the material, the jelly, actually starts to come out into that central canal. And then the last, and that one's very rare. Uh, there's a there's a fourth classification which is called a sequester, in which case some of this breaks off, and it's got its own little lump of stuff in there. They got to go get that, unless it's not causing any problems. That usually has to be dealt with surgically. A bulge and a herniation, if we do the right stuff, can actually be healed. So there are things that we can do. Uh, coming out of school uh, a long time ago, uh, uh, very popular, and, and it's still useful today with the right group. Um, it's called the McKenzie exercises. Uh, and it's all about extending, and by extending, you can force that, that disc material back into the disc itself. It doesn't always happen, but it can. Um, once you get to a rupture beyond, it's not gonna change. As far as the disc, the symptoms so, can still be managed. So when you say it doesn't always, but it can, real ballpark key, what's the percentage time that it would probably go back? Uh, it, it's hard to say because we don't take, once we're better, we don't go back and take repeat images. Uh -huh. So who knows? Um, but, but more importantly is can we get the symptoms to go away? Because we can deal with some, some wear and tear. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it, it, it can, it has been shown that it can be reduced, however. So that's, that's the number one, usually a younger person's problem. Number two, th this is where most of us fall right here. Arthritis, degenerative disc disease, or a better term, stenosis. So this, So what, what does this look like? And I'll, I'll draw a picture on this one too. But this group, we're usually over 50. Again, we did the math. That, that's most of us. Uh, here, um, we have pain with walking and standing. So this is our grocery cart crap. We, we've, all, we've all either been there or seen that. You're going through the grocery grocery store, you're just, you're just hanging over because man, it's the easiest way because the grocery store, Walmart didn't get any smaller and we're still pushing and that thing's just hurting. We find over the past. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so this one is relieved. That's a down arrow. Relieved by sitting down and resting. So, let me draw a little picture. So coming back to our little drawing here. So what, what happens in, in the arthritis, the stenosis group, is as we get over the age of 50, typically we're going to start seeing a decrease in the height of a disc. We get that degenerative disc thing that goes on. So whereas in the previous picture we had a, an expected 
Who's taller now than when they were 20? Okay, so we, we, we shrink down with time. And so what, what happens is where this disc was normally sitting nice and pretty right here inside a defined border. Now it's all compressed and now it's kind of smushing out a little bit. Well, what happens is we start to see the vertebrae themselves creating some, some lipping on the, on, the, on the front side. We start to see it on the back side as well. And so what, what we don't see here is on the, the, the little joints in the back, the, the facet joints. Uh, they tend to get some arthritic changes as well. So the net result is we get a lot of inflammation and overgrowth inside this central canal. And so that closure does two things. It, it narrows the space for the, the spinal cord coming down, but also it, it narrows the space where this nerve needs to come out right there. And so that's where we get a lot of this pinch nerve business. So if you're dealing with a pinch nerve, more than likely you're, you're right here in this crowd. Again, this is folks, pain goes up, walking and standing. The longer you're there, yeah, the, the, the tighter, the more knotted that gets. So is that why I'm shorter than I used to be? Absolutely. I used to be 6'4". I didn't measure myself for over 20 years. And we had to do it the other day, and I've lost two stinking inches. Really? Wow. I was really upset about that. I was I lost really those proud. inches too, but they went down. <laughs> <laughs> So, the uh, most common level for arthritis, degenerative disc disease, and stenosis. Any idea? L4, L5. Wow. So, obviously, that's a critical location. Four and five is the, the area where we get most of our issues. So, we talked about how many people. So, we had 100, we do 100 MRIs of people over the age of 50. How many? How many of those have arthritis, degenerative disc disease, or stenosis? It's up to 95%. And again, no pain with that. So I, I have patients that come in, and they've, they've got their, their MRIs, they've had their, their, their x-rays, their CTs, whatever, whatever, um, and I look at it and they've got, oh man, the thing looks horrible. They've got all sorts of stuff going on. Um, they've got this that stenosis at every level uh, and they come in and their pain is even where that stuff is going on. So the, the take home <laughs> message is on the MRI, on the imaging, yes, it'll show this degenerative process that's going on, but most of us have it to, to some extent. What, what, once we cross this threshold, Stuff is wearing out, but it doesn't have to be symptomatic. It doesn't have to be causing us any pain. That's interesting. So I, I typically, a person comes in, I, I love to see the imaging. Ideally, I don't look into at it until after I've evaluated my patient. Because I don't go into it with this preconceived idea, of, well, this is going on and all these, and so this is exactly what I'm going to see. Because I can tell you, the, the worst stuff that I've seen come in on imaging, that's really not what the problem is. So imaging can be deceiving. You know, the doctors will tell you I'm free. <laughs> but I'm not. So the third one is kind of the, the tougher one. Anytime that we're treating somebody and we just don't get good outcomes, it's probably because we've overlooked the third one. And the third is the SI joint, or the pelvis. So, again, you have to forgive my art, artistry here. So if we've got, wow, that's terrible. I've got to start over. So if we've got a, 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 a stack of blocks, Which, which, wow, that's terrible. So if we want that, that stack to stay standing up, which is the most important block there? The bottom one, absolutely. So in the back we have a bottom block as well. And it's not L5, it's S, 
It's, it's the sacrum or the, or the tailbone, if you will. So the, the sacrum serves as the capstone to this, this arch. So the legs come out right here. And so whenever you see a, a, a big stone arch that Masons have built, there's, there's going to be that center stone that, that everything hinges on to keep this from collapsing. Well, this joint right here is that in the, in the human body. So we've keystone. got the keystone, absolutely. We, we've got the pelvis out here. We've got the, the sacrum right in the middle. The sacrum sits right below L5 right here. And so all of this force is directed right through here. So it, it's important to consider what's happening here. So that is the area whenever we're feeling it right there. Nine times out of ten, it's our SI joint. The SI gets complicated because it looks like a lot of other things. Um, so what can cause pain there? We can get that from, from falls. Any sort of trauma, um, motor vehicle accident, car wrecks, that sort of thing. Very common to see it in child labor. Um, those hormones relax everything in the birth canal, and get a, if it's, if it's a, there's a lot of pushing involved, this is the compromised area. So we tend to see that a little bit more common in, in females, but it can happen just as much in males, especially if, there's, if there are falls, if there's trauma, especially if they've got a lot of tightness in the back side of their leg. That changes the mechanics there. Um, so this one, where do we see this? We have pain with sitting. It's very frequently here. Or if we're changing posi positions. So rolling over in bed, the back grabs you. More often than not, it's the SI joint. That's the problem that you're dealing with. This, this is also the person, and, and so again, full disclosure, I deal with both number three and both number two. So I have to deal with both of them. So this is also the one, this is your shifter. So standing here for a little bit, starts to feel a little un, unnatural, and I'm shifting over here. So this is almost always a problem right here. We're just relieving the pressure on either side. So this is also a problem, because x-ray and MRI doesn't really pick this up. That's not, there's, there's not a disc bulging out. All that's really sitting here is a lot of ligaments and they just don't show up that much on x-ray or MRI, so that is missed a lot. Um, interestingly, I was looking at that on you. You've got a little of that going on. 70% of the time, and don't ask me why, maybe it's about being right-handed. It's on the right side. It's because this pelvic bone is shifted forward. I don't know why. It's just the way it works out. I'm left-handed and mine's on the left side. I'm I'm <laughs> Maybe it's about hand dominance. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but again, clinically, whenever we're dealing with the back and we just haven't gotten the result that we're looking for, we've probably overlooked the SI joint. And so we go back to that, and that gives us some good issue there. So past all of that, getting down to number six on your yellow sheet, the three top common causes of low back pain and sciatica, um, A, the SI joint or the pelvic problems, and that's pain that you have when you're sitting or, or changing position. Uh, B, the stenosis, the degenerative disc disease, or arthritis, uh, that's the pain that you have standing or walking. And then C is the herniated disc, or that's the pain that you have when you're bending forward. And so, again, most, most of the times these are not isolated. There's not <coughs> one only. Uh, especially when we get over that age of 50. They tend to go hand in hand. Um, so what does successful treatment look like? Let me get rid of that. Well, I'm a, I'm a big fan of hands-on treatment. Um, and, and I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit. There are times that we, we need to 
initially you have a lot of inflammation. We've got to get in there, we've got to disrupt that inflammation because that, that's our problem. That's what's causing the issue is we've got to stop that. Medication can, we, we can alter it, but somehow we've got to disrupt that. And so our, our hands on our <coughs> manual techniques are what we really rely on to do that. When I went to Riadosa for my bursitis, it was an amazing difference. And how long did I go while I was there? A month? Yeah. Wait, it was amazing. Twice a week. For a month. It, it's, if, so again, exercise is important. We all need to exercise. I need to exercise more than I am. Uh, I go see my doctor. He gripes at me because I'm not exercising enough. Okay, thank you. Um, so we all need to exercise, and that's important. But from a clinical standpoint, a lot of times we've got to get our hands. Sometimes does it involve some manipulation, some chiropractic approach? Sometimes it does. Sometimes that's what's needed. Sometimes it needs just a manipulation or mobilization of, of the sacroiliac joint. Sometimes we need to mobilize each of the lumbar, the vertebra themselves, and mobilize the discs in, in certain cases. Um, there are times when that's not effective, we need to get even in deeper. Sometimes we need to do some, some dry needling in, into that area. Uh, for that some, so, so dry needling is, this, this is 57 hours worth of done into a couple seconds. Dry needling is, we use the same needles as the acupuncturist. That's not true, mine are a little bit longer. So, so we use the same needles basically as the acupuncturist. But an acupuncturist is going to look at meridians, chi, your yin and your yang, your life force. I don't know anything about those things. And I don't want to know. Uh, acupuncturists do great at what they do. What I look at is, is physiology and anatomy. So when I'm dealing with the SI joint, I know what ligaments are involved. I know what to go get. Um, that sounds wonderful. I, it's one of the best approaches that I've used between the manipulation, the little soft, easy stuff, or hard aggressive, and the needling, we can do a lot <coughs> back there. Again, it's about bringing down the inflammation. Um, what brain chase the squirrel? Ah, uh, we talked about number two, the, the degenerative disc, the stenosis. A lot of times we see that coming right out here, right down the hip. Um, so often that gets diagnosed as the hip problem. So you go into the doctor, they say, oh, I think that's your hip. And so they go and they take the x-rays, the MRIs, and they come back and say, well, your hip is fine. It's your back. And so there's a lot of needling. I've chased this problem for 20 years. Until I started needling it, I never could get a decent result. Once we start needling it, that fast. The so steroid shots don't last long. <coughs> the, the problem with steroid shots is they're going into the general area. When, 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 we, when we dry needle, we are targeting exact musculature. We know where it all is. We go hit it, we hit the trigger point, get a release, and, and that's step one. You have to go through all the work. Does Medicare pay for that? That's a tricky question. Medicare doesn't pay for me to stick the needle in. Medicare does pay for me to manipulate it and to do some soft tissue work and the manual work and the exercise after. Every place is a little bit different. I don't charge for sticking the needle in. I just charge for all the rest of it. It takes me. And um, so Medicare pays for that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't. I I can I can get the needles in there pretty fast. So you have to have a doctor's referral though before you can. For, for Medicare, for it to be covered, I have to have a doctor's referral. Okay. Uh, There's some insurances, and so we we are. What is this? October. Six weeks in. We are six weeks into direct access in Texas, so we are still learning which insurance insurances will let you come. Again, great state of Texas for that two weeks without without a doctor's order and it be covered. We've had some come back and it does. Medicare is definitely not one. Uh, so, but if it's a supplement policy, no, it doesn't work. No, it, Medicare has to go first in the supplement. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're working on that. We 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 hope we can get some changes with that. Uh, changes with the government is tough. Well, so if you've got I, a good relationship with your doctor and they know you're not BSing them and it's all true and they'll get you a referral. Yeah. So. I have found most doctors, if, 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 if they go to, if a patient goes to their doctor and say, hey, this is going on and I want to do this. My doctor referred me to the one in Riadosa 
guy. Yeah, it, it, it's usually never a problem. Uh, every now and then there's a, a, an odd situation where a doctor is just really doesn't like to refer, or a situation where a doctor has e either their own, which they're only going to send to their own, or very specific ones that they just like doing business with. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful there. Are you getting the right service? Are you getting the right treatment there? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I'm completely independent. I don't have ties to no one. So I can I can make this doctor mad. I can make that one mad. Mm -hmm. well, that does in, in our personal situation, our doctors say, I'll just give you a generic, you know, here it is, and you can go to whichever one you want yeah. to go to. I don't care. Most, most all of them are that way. Most all of them have, have your best interest at heart and, and will do it that way and they will listen to you on, on what you want to do. Um, there are some other oh, ducks out there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's basically what dry needling is. Um, and I, I found it to be an extremely effective tool in dealing with issues. Now, some people are extremely phobic of the needle. I've got a guy that I've dealt with for, I've seen him for a shoulder, for a back, for, for a couple of other things, and he have, he will not let me put a needle in him. Fine, that's it's fine. Wonderful. Um, I, we, so there, there's a new classification that's called a class four laser. Um, we've I, I bought a laser 20 years ago, and basically that laser was strong enough. It was basically a couple of laser pointers. I think is how strong it was. <laughs> so you can leave it on. It didn't create any heat. Didn't create any change. I don't think it did anything. I still have it sitting over there, but it, I don't think it does anything. Um, the FDA finally let us have a strong laser similar to what they've been using in veterinary medicine for 30 years um, to use in human applications. And micro something rather? What's that? Is it called micro something rather? No, ours is a light force deep tissue, deep tissue laser. Deep tissue laser. Mm. There, there, there's several there's several out there that are high powered so ours is basically 50 times more powerful than the old thing that I used that did nothing so uh, for those that have a phobia about needles we, <coughs> we do that I personally don't think it's quite as effective as needles but you also don't have the needle thing so they, they get, some people prefer it and, and they get good results from it uh, there's there, there's, there's a time and a place for both. Um, but but I, I like to get in, knock the inflammation down, get get the root root of the pain and inflammation gone, and then, then let's work on mechanics. It's got to be about mechanics and movement. So once we get that, then we're, we're in a good shape. Does it change the fact that you've got wear and tear in that, that system? No, that, that's there. But if we can change how we move, that's, that's what we want to be. Mm -hmm. So, what does successful non-invasive treatment look like? Um, I hate to use the term, uh, but it's a European style. Now, I'm not a big European fan. However, they were doing a lot of hands-on therapy, physio treatment, decades before we were allowed to do it here. And so, that's where we've looked at as our model for how we can be more effective with our treatment is what they were doing back when. And they've, they've driven a lot of the, the more recent research into success with these approaches. So the Euro style uh, of therapy. Uh, the second one, the hands-on PT to move the pelvis. So a lot of times we've got to get that, that, that SI joint, that low back. We've got to get it moving in order to make a change back there. Um, the third part, seam. We have to use strengthening exercises to stabilize the pelvis. Again. Capstone, if we don't get that solid and stable, one, we have to move it to release it. Two, we've got to stabilize it. So strength back there has to take place. And, and D, uh, a, a, either a class four laser or dry needling, there, you, whoever you see needs to have some extra tools in their toolbox in order to knock down that inflammation. Uh, you, you can't just work and push through this stuff. It, it needs some help getting over that piece. And then every now and then, on E, you, there, there are times that maybe it's 1 in 10, 1 in 15, 1 in 20, where what, what you need is traction or decompression. Uh, we don't use it that often. I've got a couple of tables over here um, that the only, the only 
benefit that, that a person can get is if we just physically take and open that spine back up. And, and sometimes we need to do that. Um, again, we don't rely on it because it's, it, it's not you being aggressive and active and, and taking care of it. But for decreasing inflammation, sometimes that's what we need to do. Does that help with MS? No. I'd like to, you bet. <laughs> Okay, I'm used to it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it, 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 it shouldn't hurt, but it really has no significant, no. So, what, what, what I'm going to, to, to wrap this up a little bit, um, what, what, what I want to do is, if anybody's got any significant things, any urgent stuff going on, um, I, I, would, I would love to take some, some time to, to evaluate you, to examine, to see what's going on, uh, to see where you fall in that three thing. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do free screen. If you came tonight, I'll do a free screening on it, uh, whoever wants to do that. Um, I've got one, two people that, that, that can schedule that for you if you want to. No, no charge, no cost. It's just about getting information. You're, you're, a, you're a better person to, to go to number three to handle your problem if you know what's going on and what you can do about it. So if anybody needs to or wants to, Ashton or Angela can take care of that and they'll be glad to do that now or when you walk out. Uh, beyond that, does anybody have any questions for me? I, you've been talking a lot. Right here. <laughs> what's the difference between chiropractic and what you do as a physical Okay, so once upon a time, it was a difference between, they used to classify, we're going to call it manipulation or mobilization. It used to be grade one through five. Grade five, we could call what we did a grade five mobilization. But let's be honest, it was a manipulation. Um, so.